Okay, I'm currently sitting on a very broken chair. I need to pull up the seat and rip it apart because it's disintegrating. Hello, hello, it's Echo. I just wanna jump on here really quick and tell you about some really basic tips if you have never gardened before in your life. Consider this Echo's introduction for baby gardeners, like me. I've only been gardening for a couple years, so I'm not like a super expert. However, I have been doing this for a couple years, so I figured I could at least tell you about the handful of lessons I have learned in the very beginning so that you don't have to learn them the hard way. At some point, I will make a more structured version of this video, but I figure we can just start here. The very first lesson that I learned the hard way is that there is a difference between dirt and soil. So plants are basically like any other living thing on earth, they have to eat. And the way that plants eat is by absorbing nutrients through their roots from the soil. Soil is made from broken down organic matter. Generally, it has a lot of microorganisms. It's living. Soil is kind of alive. Soil has like its own micro, um, biome and plants need that. Dirt is made up of rocks and in the same way that you and I cannot eat a rock, a plant can't eat a rock. There is no nutritional value in sand or clay. You can grow a plant in soil, you can grow a plant in a mix of soil and dirt, but you can't grow a plant in dirt. I've killed a whole bunch of plants by just sticking them in dirt thinking, oh this should be fine, it's free, it's available, I can just throw plants in that, right? No, they die because there's no food. It's especially deceptive because seeds have all of the nutrition within the seed itself to grow a seedling. So for the tiny little plant to like burst out and have two little leaves, it can do that basically with just water and sunlight. If you give a seed water and heat, it will grow a root and then push the shell off to reveal two leaves. Those are its baby leaves. Kind of like baby teeth, the first two leaves that a seedling throws off are just so that they can actually start growing. The second pair of leaves that it gets after those first two are called their true leaves. If a seed is viable and you get it to grow a little seedling, that is germination. You've gotten the seed to germinate, to start to grow. When you have a handful of seeds, some of them might not germinate. Some of them might not come out of the shell and grow seedlings. A lot of the time on seed packages, they'll actually list a percentage of viability. Usually it's in like the 80s or 90s. As long as you're buying seeds that were for the year that you're growing them, but the germination rate slowly goes down every year after those seeds were initially grown. You can still use seeds that are like a decade old and probably still get something. So don't throw your seeds away. You can save your seeds for years. Some plants will lose germination faster than other plants. I've heard that corn loses germination really, really fast. So that's one that if you have corn for like a decade, you're probably not going to get something, but maybe if you have like a tomato, 10 years down the line, you'll still be able to grow something from those tomato seeds. Let's talk a little bit about plant anatomy. Have you ever wondered where the seeds on a carrot are? When it comes to plants, you have like the root, the stem, the leaves, and then eventually flowers, which turn into fruit. A carrot is just the root of a plant, which means that the actual like carrot plant are the greens that are off the top of it. If you left that carrot in the ground, it would continue to grow and then eventually throw off flowers if those flowers were pollinated by bees or other insects or a person, those flowers would eventually dry up and throw off seeds. Then a gardener can take those seeds and grow more plants, more carrots. So if you're growing something like a root vegetable and you're getting ready to harvest it, you are harvesting the entire plant. You are ripping up the whole plant, killing the plant, and then you're eating the root. With something like an apple tree, you can take the apples from it and the tree is still going to be fine. Also terminology worth knowing is the difference between a perennial and an annual. An annual means that it's a plant that lives for one season. It's a one year plant. It's a plant that's meant to be started in the spring and then will die by the winter. Annual meaning year. Perennial or per annual meaning like multiple years means that it's a plant that will basically live as long as it is taken care of. So an apple tree would be a perennial. It gives you food year after year and the plant doesn't die. A bean plant would be an example of an annual. A cucumber would be an example of an annual plant. There are some plants that we treat as annuals, like peppers, where you'll start growing them in the spring and then usually they will die because of the cold, but they're actually perennials meaning that if you keep them warm through the winter and if you take care of them, you can have that plant basically forever. When I was growing plants for the very first time in like 2020, 
I think it, yeah, it was 2020, maybe 2019. When I was first started growing plants in 2019, 2020, the very first thing that I did was kill 50 sunflowers. I bought a pack of sunflower seeds and a bunch of tiny cups and I filled them all with like a seedling mix. And then I planted all the sunflowers individually in the cups. I watered them, they came up, they got really, really tall and then they all fell over and they withered and died. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Now I realize I wasn't giving them enough food or light. I had them in a very dim lit room for plants. And also I was using like tiny, uh, like mouth rinsing cups that you usually get for like your bathroom. So there wasn't enough soil. They ate everything that I gave them and then starved to death. If you start looking into like gardening information, you will hear gardeners use the word leggy. So the very first thing that happens when a seedling pops out of the ground is that the leaves start looking for light and the roots start looking for water. But because seedlings need light to be able to process the nutrients from the soil, if it can't find it, it will start stretching up and trying to grow taller and taller before it puts any work into growing a second pair of leaves or better root systems because it needs to find the light. My poor sunflower seedlings, they were just like desperately trying to find light and they didn't. They never found it. There was no light to be found. If your seedling pops out of the ground and gets really, really tall, it's not doing well. But if your seedling pops out of the ground and immediately starts throwing off secondary leaves, it's doing great, most likely. Also, I'm gonna be speaking very generally. Um, this is generally the case, but I can't guarantee that it's always going to be the case. In my experience of growing like peas and sunflowers and squash, this has been the case. There are two places you can start seedlings, indoors and outdoors. Shocker. When you plant a seed directly outside, that is called direct sowing. You are sowing your seeds in the dirt. Otherwise, you're starting seeds indoors. I prefer to start seeds indoors because I feel like when I direct sow, either the seedlings will pop up and then disappear because birds or squirrels are eating them, or I won't have as good of a germination rate because I'm not babying them as much as I do when I have the seeds like in my living room. Because if I'm forced to walk by the seedlings in my living room every day, I can keep an eye on them and make sure that they're not too moist, that they're not too dry, that the soil isn't getting compacted, that they're not getting leggy. I can take them as soon as they sprout outside so they can start adapting to the natural sun. I like seeds starting indoors, even if plants sometimes do grow better when you sow them outside. Another lesson that I learned the hard way that I still sometimes have to remind myself of is drainage. Plants can't just sit in water. The roots will rot. They actually do need air in the soil. I know it sounds silly, but you can drown a plant, unless it's like a lily pad. So if you're gonna reuse like a bucket so that you can plant something, drill a hole in the bottom. If you buy a planter from like the dollar store and there's no holes in the bottom, it's usually meant as like a decorative outside that you put your plant pot with a hole in inside of. Drill holes in the bottom of your containers. You are less likely to kill your plants if you do that. If you wanna have plants indoors, there's plenty of like trays that you can get at the dollar store to put underneath your plant pots. If you are wanting to get into gardening and you're watching this around the time that it's coming out, now is like the perfect time. Because it's spring, a lot of the stores are finally stocking seeds and uh, plant pots and tools. However, you don't have to buy all of that stuff. Really, there's only two things you need to buy, soil and seeds. And that's if you don't know anyone who can give you seeds. I feel like a lot of the time people who are really into gardening are very enthusiastic and so they're more than like excited to share their seeds with you. So if you know someone who's really into gardening, just go and ask them like, can I have some seeds for something that I can grow indoors? You can grow plants in just about any container. The plants do not care. You could go to the dollar store and get a popcorn bowl and that would be fine. Again, as long as you drill holes in it. In fact, a lot of the time, the plastic from the dollar store tends to be really thin, so you could even just take like a sharp knife and cut a hole in it and it would be fine. One type of plant container I like to use because it's free, comes with the milk, uh, is a milk carton. If you just take your gallon of milk and cut off the top, it's a free plant pot which is great for if you have like an in-between stage where you're trying to get things from the inside where you're starting your seeds to the outside garden. I'm working on having a bunch of garden beds this year, but because of that, I need to have like a indoor, oh my gosh, this poor plant, you are thirsty. But again, cut holes in the bottom. The only thing that you really need are seeds for the plant. And the only thing that the plant is going to care about is the soil. Sunlight is free. If you are alive, you have access to water. Everything else you'll have access to. You can get a big bag of soil for like five, $10, or you can get like a small 
like maybe half cubic foot bag for just a couple bucks at like Walmart. I know it can be really tempting to go overboard and buy like a massive seed collection and lots of like fertilizers and all kinds of things. You don't need that. You just need soil and seeds. My recommendation if you want to get really good at gardening is to just buy one pack of seeds, one thing that you can dedicate this gardening season to. Make this your learning year because there's a good chance whatever it is you're gonna kill it. <laughs> it's just inevitable and it's very very easy to accidentally plant a ton of things and then not be able to take care of them all and get really overwhelmed and then take care of none of them. It's gonna be easier if you just have like one plant to focus on, to just hyper focus on. You can also buy plants from nurseries that's another really great place to just skip the seed starting step if you just wanna work on maintaining the health of a plant. But personally, I think the most satisfying and also one of the most difficult parts is getting a plant to grow from a seed to a healthy plant. Maybe it won't be that way for you. Maybe you just want like a hundred different types of pepper plants. You really don't have to spend a lot of money if you wanna start gardening. You can start with just the bare minimum. One of my favorite ways that I have found to get people into gardening is to just send them a random seed packet. Some of the best ones are ones for herb gardens like uh, basil, mint, dill, rosemary, because those are all things that are immediately useful to like the average person. This video is very unstructured. If there is any beginner gardener advice that you can think of, please put it down in the comments because I want this to be kind of like a resource for people. And then at some point, I'm going to make a secondary version of this video where I can be a lot more structured. This is very um, off the cuff, things that I immediately think of that I think would have been useful to know when I was first starting. Another very useful piece of advice is to just follow garden channels, like uh, Roots and Refuge is one of my favorite. I think she's got like one of the bigger channels in the homesteading community. She's had a homesteading, gardening, farming channel for like years. Another really useful one is Am I Gardener? He's got like a massive channel in the space. One of the reasons that I really like following vlogging garden channels as opposed to just straight information channels is that a lot of the time they will give you information that you didn't even know you needed. Like you'll watch a video of someone tending their cucumbers and then realizing that they missed one and now the whole plant is dying and they'll tell you that, oh, it's because I forgot this one cucumber and if you do that, then your plant thinks it's done and it dies. I never would have thought to look that up. It's kind of like a nice artificial way of spending time with someone who gardens. So you can like be an apprentice under them without having to actually know them which I think is very useful. Please ask any questions here in the comment section. I'm gonna go through and I'll try and answer as many as I can. Luckily, because this channel's a lot smaller, I actually have more of an opportunity to talk with people who are watching this. My main channel just has a never-ending barrage of comments. So believe it or not, it's a little bit easier to communicate with people here. Like on my main channel, even if I respond to someone's comment, it just gets like flooded by other comments so no one sees it. And then everyone is asking like the same question over and over again. Oh, good ladybugs. I kind of want to go catch that. I think I'm gonna, there's a ladybug on the window. I think I'm gonna go catch it because I have mint aphids and I would really like her to eat them. Okay, I'm gonna go. You have a good rest of your day. Uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts or you just wanna talk about things down in the comments, go for it. I need to go catch a ladybug. You have a good day. I will see you later. Goodbye.